Hey guys, James Kermitz from Carolina Motors. Uh, today we're gonna take this 2015 Club Car President, which I just, just now got finished putting in an eco battery. We're gonna charge that up overnight. Awesome, awesome product here. I, I sell a lot of these, I do a lot of these installs. Look how clean that is. From the other side, it looks even better. So it's got a voltage reducer, built on charger, obviously the 51 volt eco battery. Even the charging port, you just plug in an extension cord. But once I called the customer, told him it was ready, he said, how about upgrade me to the ultimate turn signal street legal kit? So I'm gonna go ahead and start this video here. So here's what my package came with. I keep these in stock. This is your turn signal stalk, which will have your push button horn on the end. Uh, built onto that harness, there is a re uh, flasher for your turn signal. Some other parts it comes with is a circuit breaker, which is like a fuse. All these wires come wired up together when you get it out of the box. Just unplug it because you're going to have to put them in different places. Comes with a return spring for your plunger style brake switch. A little L bracket that will go on your brake rod. You'll see all this as we get to it. This is a timer for your brake lights. Again, you'll see all this is going to come together. This is a relay that's going to be put behind the dash. That is a cover that goes over your uh, steering column and a 12 volt horn. Now this kit comes with two horns, a 48 volt horn and a 12 volt horn, but all these light kits that I've put together, I've got them wired to 12 or 13 and a half volts, which is about the same. So the other 48 volt horn will not work. So gotta have enough voltage to make it turn. So this is what it's gonna look like once we install it. Get your turn signal, your hazard light, you'll actually pull it out till it clicks. To cut it off, you'll just put your turn signal on and it will indicate on the on the uh, uh, housing there. You see you've got the cover, this is my personal cart, so wire and harness goes under there and underneath your uh, control panel right there. So, let's go ahead and install it on that one. Now guys, this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, just to be careful. Anytime you're working on electrical stuff, cut your run toe switch off. And the cool thing about these eco batteries, you can actually cut them off. So now I don't have any power at all going to the wires. The next step, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take these three screws. There's one here, one over there, and there's a tiny one up there. I'll let you know what size they are. And then also I'm gonna take two of these torques from this side, two from the other side, and pull the floor mat all the way out the way. All right, guys, if y'all seen any of my other videos, you know I'm kind of king of the one-handed videos, so I don't have anyone here helping me. So these were T30s on each side. These ones on the edge were also T30s, and this is a T15 right up here in the center. There we go. Now, when I take this one, you can start to see it drop down. And this one I'm always just a little careful with. Kind of rule of thumb. The smaller the screw, the bolt, anything, uh, the less torque it's going to require. So, now that I've got that loose, I'm going to gently pull this down. There it goes. So, the harness, when I installed the light harness, I actually sold this card a couple years ago. It comes with this little short harness. It has these wires that go to the headlight. We're gonna to get to the front of that. But on the other end, there is an empty nine pin connector. We're gonna use that connector. Also right beside it, there should be four wires. There's the blue with the white stripe, the orange. There's another one. Here's a blue and a green behind here. So we're gonna use those four wires to plug up to our relay. But for right now, I've got that loose. I'm going to take up the floor mat and the brake cover. All right, guys, so I've got that loose. And when I installed this uh, light harness, you've got three wires that come with the harness. So hopefully whoever installed the light harness, if you're upgrading it or if you're doing it all at the same time, you'll understand what those three wires are for. That's going to wire into my timer and my brake light switch, which we're going to have to install under here. So hopefully that's already ran for you be pretty easy to do that. Now, every time I take one of these off, I caught this uh, tip from one of the other uh, YouTube videos. These two screws here have to come off in order to put an M cord. So if you ever 
or working around those, hit them with a little bit of WD-40. You may not have to work with the M4 now, but if you do later on, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So these two screws go directly into the aluminum frame. The other two right over here are just, they just go into plastic. So those you don't have to worry about corroding in there. So we're gonna do mainly all our work right in here. So now let's jump to the next step. All right, so for my next step, and it's gonna be a little difficult to show you everything with me holding one hand, but I'm gonna take this L bracket and I've already loosened up one of the lock nuts onto the brake rod. Make sure the brake is off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit it underneath here like so, and then I'm gonna tighten it down, and then I'm gonna loop the spring, which is right here, is gonna be looped on that hole. So let me get it in place. Like I said, with one hand, no production crew, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of this off camera. All right guys, hopefully that light is not too bright. But you can see how I sandwich that nut on that rod up against the L bracket so it's not going to move anywhere. Now my next step is I'm going to loop the close end to my plunger switch. And then once I get it in there, I'm going to loop it onto that hole, which is right there. All right, you can see I've got it in place. Now how am I going to adjust this? Number one, make sure my brake is off. It's even with the gas pedal. So when I actually extend it, it's going to pull that uh, plunger out. So what I'm going to do is with the spring on there, I'm just going to kind of give it some gentle tug backwards. Once I get it back, can you see those two holes right down in there? So I'm actually going to take my drill with my 3 16 drill bit and drill a hole. So once I drill a hole, actually I'm going to hold the pressure and I'm going to drill both holes. Then I'm going to use both of my uh, Phillips head screws and underneath there is an eight millimeter. I'll be able to, once I get the screw, I'll be able to reach underneath here and hold it with a wrench while I take my other hand and tighten it down with the Phillips head screwdriver and that'll keep it from moving. So let me jump on that. All right guys, and that's what it's gonna look like. So you can see the spring, uh, there's no way for it to jump out. As you apply the brake, you can see how it pulls on that plunger. So that's what's going to energize right down through there. That's what's going to energize the brake lights. Now, I've still got to wire everything up and scoot it over to this side, but uh, I've got that done. And again, the tools I was talking about, Phelps head screwdriver right here, just like that. And then underneath it with my other hand, I have my little uh, eight millimeter uh, wrench. So that held the lock nut. That is a lock nut underneath there and so it'll keep it in place. So now let's jump over here to this. All right, now for the next step, we're gonna wire these wires that I told you to take loose. So you've got the uh, circuit breaker, you've got this pigtail, which is gonna plug in to your plunger switch, and you've got some short wires. There's one short wire, I thought there was another one. Oh, they're plugged into the end of this uh, circuit breaker. So. I've got myself a little cheat sheet. This is a instruction page that came out of the light kit, but I made myself some notes. So I know what size drill bit to drill for the, uh, for the uh, brake light switch. Also, where to wire my relay wires. Now, it is up here, but also I have found that sometimes the harnesses may have a different color. It's either gonna have a red wire or a blue with white stripe. And I wrote down the voltages or whether it's a ground. So I made myself a note on that. And pay attention, to, and another note, the yellow wire for the brake lights or for the passenger side, the right side. If not, when you turn your left turn signal on, it's gonna be left up front, but it's gonna blink your right rear light. So be sure that you've got those color wires in the correct place. And then here's one here, and I overlooked this a couple times and it kicked my tail. Connect the gray bullet connector. Now let me show you where that gray bullet connector is. So there's one end of it, and this is on your harness that you're gonna add on. And if you look around, and I've had so many people tell me, I don't have another gray wire. Keep looking, there it is right there. It's hidden on the factory harness. So here's my aftermarket harness, and here's my factory harness. So I've got to plug those two together if you want your brake lights to work properly. All right, I got that together. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow my wires. So I've got a red and an orange or a brown and then a black. So those are my three wires coming from here. So I've got my red, my orange, and my black. So this one did not have a brown wire, but every once in a while you'll get aftermarket harness with a brown wire. So now let's follow the black wire goes to three minus. So I grab my timer. I'll explain how this works later. And there's my three minus. So I need to plug my black wire to that. My orange wire plugs into a connector. So I'm gonna use one of these short little wires I'm gonna have to pull off. And then it needs to go to the one plus, which it doesn't say plus, but it says one. I've only got three terminals. See it better from that direction. So I know that's my one. And then the red wire is gonna go in junction with my circuit breaker. Circuit breaker goes to my uh, brake light switch, which is down here. Or actually it goes to a connector, then to the brake light switch. So the connector will be this little piece right here. And then out of the brake light switch, that other end of the connector goes up here to the two plus. Got everything there. So let me do this with uh, two hands and I'll come back. All right guys, so I followed that diagram and this is what it ended up looking like. So there's my circuit breaker. You know, when it's shorted out, it pops it out. So push it in to make sure it's reset. It goes to my connector. I followed all my wires. I matched them up to the numbers on the timer. Now I, the timer actually uses a piece of Velcro. Yeah, a little sticky Velcro. I'm gonna stick it to the sidewall right there. It cannot come out the back. There's no way it can flip out run the wires underneath this brake rod and plug it into my plunger switch. So let me go ahead and mount all of that. But when you get these directions, pay attention to the uh, gray wire. Make sure your yellow wire is on the right hand side. Let me show you what I'm talking about on the yellow wire. Hopefully there's enough light. So this is your harness that goes to your passenger brake light. So if I was to open that harness or just, I've got everything so neatly zip tied in here. Let's see if I can find out. There you go. So as it comes up right there, you can see there's a yellow wire in there. Now, this other driver's side, when it comes up, there's not gonna be a yellow wire in there. So the yellow wire is for right side and I can't remember what color, I think it's a white wire goes over here to the driver's side brake light. So let me get all this mounted and come back together with you guys. All right guys, so there it is. So I stuck it to the side of the wall there. I've got my circuit breaker just laying there. For some reason it pops a fuse. I've never had it do that or we can always just pull the carpet up and push that reset button. The wires come right outside of there and connect up to the plunger switch. So now when we hit the brakes, see it better, there we go. And I'm gonna move my dash out the way for a second. Again, apologize for this low budget production, but when I hit the brakes and click it in, the spring has got tension on it, but it's pulling that plunger. The bolts are gonna keep it from coming all the way out. And then of course you release it, it goes back in. Now what this timer does, well, you know golf carts, when you set the brake, the brake pedal's on all the time, so the switch is gonna be active. It generates a time or a timer inside of there. I think it's like 40 seconds or close to it. And the brake lights will stay on for 40 seconds and then it cuts off until you release and hit the brakes again. So if you park it and go inside, go shopping, whatever, hang out with your friends, don't worry about it, it's not gonna drain your battery down. The lights are not gonna be on the whole time. So that's what the benefits of the, of the uh, timer is. And I call this a plunger style brake light switch. This is not one of the brake pads that bolt on to your brake pedal. I, I don't like those. Then you've got a wire coming down here. To me, that's just too much stuff to snag. I want everything hidden. So everything will be underneath the floor mat. So now let me put the uh, brake cover back on there, put the floor mat back on there. Then we've got to start messing with these wires and also install the turn signal stalk. All right, the next step, we're gonna install the uh, turn signal stalk. So I'm gonna loosen up this little flathead 
and I like to come down maybe about two or three inches. If your customer doesn't like it with his knees or whatever, you can always adjust it. There's plenty enough harness to do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up, run my wire right down my steering column, and then I'm gonna snap on this cover that covers everything up. So half of it's open, you see what it looks like, but it's gonna snap on right on the side, just like I showed you on my personal cart a few minutes ago. All right, there it is. So I've got the stalk on there, it's snugged up. You see about how far, a couple inches. Snap my cover on there. My harness went right down this outside channel here and it's kind of hanging. Now, this nine pin is going to connect to that nine pin there. You've got to kind of find some room for this flasher. It's kind of big, but that's what does the uh, uh, blinking, the pulsating of the uh, light turn signals. So there's some room behind there, but I'm just going to let you know right now, it's a little tight, so you may have to wiggle this wire around a little bit. Also, you can see where this tab on the corner so that wire may have to come down like this. And it actually gets pretty flat. So the corner I'm talking about is that corner right there. So again, I'm gonna take two hands and let's see what, well actually too, before I do that, I need to plug up my relay. So this is my relay that I, that I was talking to you about earlier. And another cool thing about this relay, if you look at the size of the terminals, you almost cannot screw it up, but you still need to kind of pay attention what's going on. So I've got my relay right there. Let's get my cheat sheet that I drew up and see where I put open and then the blue one goes next to it. So this relay is in this configuration. Not this or anything like that, but just like that. So now I am going to hook my blue wire here my green one down here. Now these terminals get smaller. So a red, in my case, I think it's a blue with white stripe. Let's look and see if we can find it. Yep, it's a blue with white stripe. So I got a solid blue and then a blue with white stripe. So I don't have a red. So I'll hook my blue with white stripe to this bottom and then the orange one to be up top. And then once I get it, and those wires are only about that long. I've got to shove it up in here too. So let me go ahead and plug that up. All right, I want to show you that before I hide it. You can see the wire is very short, but I'm going to tuck it in there. So I've got that done. Now I need to plug in, this is from my turn signal stalk. Plug it on the end of that nine. And then I've also got to hide the flasher unit. Let me go ahead and point out something else right here also. These connectors are tight. They've got a little rubber weather seal that keeps the moisture out of it, but they are snug. So when you do push it together, make sure these tabs are pushed down. And you may need to rock it at an angle each way, kind of like this, if I can do this with one hand, to make sure that those end retainers snap in. So I'm gonna have to work with this one, and then I'm gonna start tucking. All right, guys, so once I get it in place, and I've got my wire kind of going down, you see what I was talking about. I start with that T15 up top, and then before I put in my T30s on the side, I look under the bottom, and yep, I had some wires fall down. So right now, with that on the top, I can rock it out, tuck the wires, pull it down, and then put my two T30s there. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, got all that done. I got my bolts, T30 from there and over on that side. So I'm ready to go. And guys, also another thing, if this is your first time, don't put the floor mat together first. So uh, I've done so many of these, uh, I'm gonna roll the dice that I did it properly. So, but uh, just leave it loose to you, test it once you get everything on, and then you don't have to pull anything apart. But do not forget about that gray wire right here beside there. And you saw how easy it was to overlook. So I can't tell you how many times, I mean dozens of times, uh, I see somebody complaining about the brake lights not working and I said you plug in the uh, gray bullet connector with the red connector and uh, or gray wire with the red bullet connector and they did not so don't forget to do that and let's move on to the horn so on the horn we're going to need a 10 millimeter and your horn wires I'm probably going to need a flashlight yeah, let me get a flashlight. All right, here we go. So your horn wires are coming right off your harness for your headlight. 
And so if you look, there they are. Brown, and, or excuse me, orange and black. And it doesn't matter where it goes. So where I hook that to is to this 10 millimeter bolt right there. You can take it loose, nothing's gonna fall down. There's one on each side. I just put them on the driver's side, it really doesn't matter. As long as these wires will reach up there and plug it. Now what I do like to do is position the horn down so if it does splash in some water, it's not upside down and it could actually hold water. Uh, you shouldn't be submerging these things in water anyway, but we, we know how that goes. So let's go ahead and take that 10 millimeter bolt off and get ready get ready to bolt up our horn. All right, there the bolt is out. And here you can see the bolt. It's a little, it looks like a fine thread. Um, I put it on the bracket of my horn. I'm going to position it like this so it's pushing down. And let's go ahead and bolt it. And there you have it. So I've got it bolted up here to that little L bracket. I've got my wires plugged in. I will tell you this, I don't know why. Every single one I do, these wires are a crazy tight fit. So first time, make sure you've got a position where you want it so you don't start pulling those on and off. Um, and also, I took the bracket and I kind of pulled it a little bit because I didn't want it vibrating against this bracket here. So I've got plenty of clearance. It's pointing down. And I think that's my last step. So let's go overlook everything and let's fire the battery up and the run toe switch and see what we got. All right. And by the way, give me a call if you're looking for an eco battery. I do ship uh, nationwide. Uh, eco is an awesome product. I've got it in my personal cart. Um, I've got how-to videos on how to make this simple for just an ordinary, uh, you know, garage mechanic to install these. But give me a call on these. So now I'm going to cut the eco battery on. So it's fired up. Cut my run toe switch on. So my eco battery is firing up. We've got 30%. I just did a fresh install, and that is common for them to be a little low. Uh, it'll charge up fully in two and a half hours. Now, in order for the lights to work with the eco battery, I've got the voltage reducer wired to the headlight. So I'll, I mean, to the key switch. So I'm gonna cut my headlight on. You'll see as soon as I cut the key switch on, the headlights come alive. Now I should have park lights in the rear, which I do. I'll fold that seat up just so we can see. So now, and the turn signals, everything will not work without the key gone. So let's hit our left turn signal. All right, so it is flashing up front. Let's hope the left one's flashing in the rear. Yep. Now let's try the right one. Yep. Those eco volts reducers put out 13 and a half volts, which is fine. Now we need to try the brake lights. So the brakes are off. Let's energize the brakes. And to make it simple, I'm gonna cut the headlights off. So now we've got brake lights. Not exactly how long it's gonna take. I think it's around 40 seconds. But remember the parking brake is energized and see if that cycles off like it's supposed to. And when it does cycle off, it'll reset that whole, there it goes. So it will actually reset that uh, uh, timer every time the brakes are applied, let off and applied. So you see the brakes are engaged. So if I cut them off, hit them again. Yep, I got brake lights. And if I had park my headlights on, that bright will go to like a park light. Oh, hazard lights, pull that out. Yep. And to cut those off, you just took the turn signal on. Oh, the horn. Yep, got the horn rolling. So, there you go. Hopefully that video was helpful to you guys. Um, show your appreciation. I'd love for you to like and subscribe to the channel. It's uh, Carts and Farts. And uh, I've got a lot of other good videos on there also for just some known I'm not going to say issues, but just some known corrections for anything that may be going on, some common stuff. Uh, I'm also a Plum Quick dealer. And let's see here. I've got, yep, got one of their postcards on the uh, cabinet there. Uh, this cart here, I actually did a Plum Quick with lead acid batteries probably about a year ago. 
but uh, I test drove this earlier before he added the turn signal to the job and it was doing solid 30 miles an hour. So he's gonna be very, very happy with this thing. So again, thanks again for the uh, watching the low budget video. Click and subscribe, give me a shout, give me an email. Let me know if you've got any questions. Be glad to try to help you through it. Have a great night. All right, guys, I uh, did the install last night. Uh, it's the next morning. So you can see I just plugged my 110 electrical cord and 100% we're resting at 53 volts. That's probably moving down a little bit. So all I've got to do is just unplug that. Again, you can see the eco battery installed. There's a little card that comes in and lets you know to register the battery. All the batteries do have a serial number, so Eco can monitor your eight-year warranty. So let's go take it for a test drive. All right, guys, so I just took it for a test drive. Uh, it was doing a solid 27 up a slight hill and about 30 down that same slight hill. Uh, in my neighborhood, there's not very many completely flat surfaces. But uh, the way I obtain those speeds is obviously the light weight of the Eco battery. So that's a 51 volt. 105 amp hour through hole very clean install and then of course the plum quick bandit so again that bandit's about a year old they come with a one-year warranty but i've seen a bandit's been around for a long time so i see a lot of these carts um you know with the older bandits in there but you know they uh take their pride as the motor with the handle on there welded on there it makes it real easy to install but uh anyway Nice install. I just want to throw this little performance uh, information at the end of the turn signal. I know it doesn't have anything to do with the turn signals, but getting ready to take it back to my customer, and I'm sure he's going to be happy. So be sure to reach out to me for any golf cart needs. Uh, like I said, I do keep the turn signal kits in stock. Uh, local installs, if you don't want to tackle it yourself, just give me a call. Uh, I've got a website that I'm working on, so you'd see the website for some other products I have. And, of course, the Eco Batteries. Uh, I can ship that out and uh, follow my channel please click and subscribe. It does help me out with my views. And uh, like I said, hopefully this will help you be able to save yourself some little install money and do it yourself. All right, you guys have a good one and drive safe.